Hey, what you doing guys? So this time I've made a Spotify logo animation and what I'm going to do in this video is to break down the process into various parts and to show you how I've created different effects of the animation. So in this video we are going to make the first part of the animation which is this sound wave effect, alright? So no more talking, let's jump off the effect. <laughs> Alright, so first thing we have to do is to create a new composition. Let's name this sound wave and let's make it 2000 by 2000, 24 frames per second and let's press OK. Now let's create a new background, new solid, let's rename this BG and make comp size. Let's choose a nice color, let's say this shade of blue, OK. And now we have a background, let's lock this just so we don't move it. And now let's create a new adjustment layer and here we're gonna create the sound wave. So for that let's search here for this audio wave form effect. But before this let's go in the project files and let's drag this sound over here. And what we have to do now is to take this audio layer and just set it to our song make sure you disable this adjustment box and now we have to change a little bit these settings but it's gonna be different from song to song so if you choose another song your settings should be should be a little bit different but you should always have digital here and for the display samples i'm going to have 43 for the maximum height i'm going to have 230 and for the duration 160. Also make sure the thickness is I don't know about 20 and the softness just 1 or even 0. Alright so let's see how it looks now. Actually we have to cut the song so just press LL to reveal the, the sound wave and I'm going to take this and just drag it to the left until I see something that I want like this part where it's blank. So I'm going to drag this to the left a little bit. Let's say something like this. Let's see how it looks now. Yeah, okay. It looks pretty good in my opinion. Now if you look at the original project, we can see that after the beat on the song starts, we want the sound wave to mold after a circle so that's what we're gonna do in this project. So for that let's create a shape circle just so we have a reference. Take the ellipse, hold shift just to make it a perfect circle. Put the anchor point in the middle, align it to the center and now let's scale it a little bit, something like this. Make sure you don't have any fill to this, but we should have a stroke. Alright, maybe let's increase the size a little bit more, something like this. And let's not forget to rename this adjustment layer to Soundwave, just so we can have a nice and clean project. And this will be circle reference. Alright, now let's go into this path and we don't have one yet, so let's take this pen tool and let's enable the proportional grid. Let's create a point here and another one here. Make sure you hold shift just so it will be perfectly horizontal and now double click on it, hold ctrl and shift and scale it a little bit until it's the same size as this circle. And now let's choose the path to mask one. Now we have a mask which is this mask one. So what you should do now is here when the bit on the song starts to come in we should change the path so it will be mold after this circle. So for that let's put a keyframe on the path and then let's go about 35 frames or so 
and let's put another keyframe. Now what we should do is to go into the circle reference, go into the ellipse path, right click and convert this to Bezier path. And now we want to make this path unclosed. So for that, let's take the pen tool. Let's put a point right here. Let's select both of the points, right click and just uncheck this closed box. All right. And now just click on this path stopwatch, control C to copy the path and go back to our sound wave path. Let's delete this keyframe and let's paste the new, the new path from the, from the circle reference. Let's actually take this and move it so it will be exactly on the circle. All right, and let's hide this. Also, let's hide the proportional grid. And you can see that the morph is actually pretty bad. We don't want it to be like this. So what we should do now is to manually position all the points of the mask so it will be perfectly molded onto this circle. So first of all, Let's enable again the circle reference and after a couple of keyframes, make sure we have the proportional grid again. So here we want this to be, let's say here, actually let's change this color of the mask because it's pretty, pretty ugly. Okay. This one here, this one here and this one here. And you have to spend a little bit of time. So just take your time. It will be worth it in the end. And make sure you make sure you change the color of the stroke because I don't like this, this black. All right. Then we should go a couple of frames forward. And again, make sure you have the points in the right, in the right place like this. So I'm going to speed up this part a little bit because it's very time consuming and I'll catch up with you in a second. It's not a game, it's a red thing. So I'm pretty much done with it, but you can go frame by frame and see where the where the pet is the most unaligned. So let's see here and you can actually take multiple points and just drag them. It doesn't have to be perfectly on the circle. Maybe here. You know, something like this. Maybe here. Okay, and let's now disable the circle reference and let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good, right? Maybe here the path should be a little bit closer to this one just so we have another point right here. Something like this. Okay, and now what you can do is to change a little bit its color. So for that, I'm going to search for fill effect. Double click on this and Let's put a keyframe on the color. Let's press U to reveal the property. Then go to frames forward and put another keyframe. So for the first keyframe, 
let's say we want it to be like this blue and for the second keyframe this red it's kind of cool and now we want the color to switch back and forth between these two colors so for that just hold alt and click on the stopwatch and let's write here loop out and let's choose ping pong okay let's see how it looks now it looks good in my opinion we can also put some rotation to it like maybe maybe here let's put a keyframe and maybe another one here let's say we want about two rotations and let's make this loop loop out a cycle let's see how it looks now yeah okay it looks pretty good so this is what we have in this part now we can see that the lines start one by one so we can do the same here so for that let's create a new a new adjustment layer let's name this mask put it above the sound wave and what we should do is take the rectangle tool double click on it go into the mask put a keyframe on the path and here when it starts to change the path let's put another keyframe so for the first keyframe the mask should be should be here and then it should go all the way up to the right and let's take the sound wave and just make sure you set it to alpha matte mask so now the lines appear one by one so here you can see that the mask cuts the line so we don't want this so double click on it and just and just scale this mask accordingly here is the same here the same situation you know what i mean we don't we don't want the mask to cut the line we want it to seem like the lines appear one by one so we should put keyframes everywhere we see that the that the mask cuts the line again it will take some time if you want to do this but it will be worth it in the end okay i'm done with this let's see how it looks now okay it looks pretty good so this is the first part and in the next video i think i will cover up this part when the sound wave actually morph into these three lines of the spotify logo and maybe we're gonna animate the ball a little bit so thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to leave a like or subscribe and you know all that good stuff see you soon bye <laughs>